Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. The saga continues. The Adam Jones version 2 review and demo is finally here. I had to wait a while for mine to come in this time. So as we break the seal on this guitar, let's do a quick recap here. Adam Jones is the guitarist of the band Tool. He's always been viewed as the Silverburst guy. Sure, there's other people who have used Silverburst Les Paul Customs, but he adopted them and just made it part of his identity. When I bought my brand new Silverburst Custom in 2012, the Guitar Center guys were asking me, hey, is it because of Adam Jones' Tool? And I was like, yeah, yeah, but really in my head I was like, no, <laughs> it's just because I like Silverburst. I had heard of the band at that point in time, but that was only through Guitar Hero World Tour. So that was before I even really knew what guitar Adam used. But in 2020, Gibson made it official by releasing a signature Silverburst. They did 79 in a heavy age sign for 10k and 179 in VOS for 6,000. Oh, and don't forget about Sweetwater's stolen batch of these guitars. So there are a little bit more than the 79-179 due to the reissues of those, but who knows what happened to that stolen batch. Now Gibson underestimated the demand that this guy could bring in. So quickly, the aged and signed ones would bring $25,000 on the used market, and VOS was topping out around 15 to 18 k The only other guitar to do this in recent years is the Noel Gallagher J150. In fact, I think that one even inflated more. But you can check out this video to learn more about that one. And obviously, as these things were coming out, the vintage market went from three to 5,000 on these guitars, all the way up to like seven to 12 k depending on condition, originality, year, etc. And nowadays, the market has kind of settled down a little bit, but it will never go back to the way it used to be. So, I reviewed those, I compared those to a real Silver Burst, you can check that out in this video. Towards the end of that, Gibson started rumors of an Adam Jones Flying V in Silver Burst at the end of one of their teaser videos, and then people thought, hey, we're gonna see an Epiphone version. But here we are, one year later in 2021, what did they do? They did another batch of 79 light aged this time ones, which I'll be honest, it it feels kind of cheap. A lot of people were kind of upset by this who bought the original ones. And a lot of people were thinking, great, now the prices are going to go down on them. But in reality, no, nah, that didn't really happen. To me, this is just a third iteration of the Adam Jones. It's different than all the other ones. I still have an age sign, so we'll kind of compare those on the workbench to make my video different than most people's. However, I'm not even sure how many V2 reviews ended up getting done. So first off, right away, the case looks about the same. It seems the bubble wrap is still doing the same thing <laughs> where it pulls up the finish, at least in a couple of areas. Let's go ahead and check out version two. Ooh, interesting. That color looks a little bit different. I'm really excited to see these two side by side. So a lot of guys have been saying that the aging on this one looks a little bit better. And I guess it kind of depends what you're looking for in an aged guitar. If you want one that has really heavy finish checking to it, like this does not look lightly aged to me. I would say it's like moderately aged. There's just not a lot of finish missing like on the first one. So if what you're looking for is kind of like just a vintage silver burst that's aged in, you know, some sort of way, because that's what makes this one different from the first run is they weren't trying to replicate anything of Adam Jones except for his specs with the pickups. So first glance here, this one has fret nibs. The last one didn't have fret nibs, I don't think. So that's one thing I'm seeing right away. So maybe they changed the fret wire. So I remember that was a big deal that that one didn't have fret nibs. The headstock's looking pretty nice. It's got all that finish checking here. The backside of this one, it is hand signed by him as well, but you'll see our serial number's different. It's 1979 V2 that they're calling them. And I have number 28. Looks like the logo on the back is looking a little bit different. If you checked out my old video, I was scared there wasn't a volute, but there is, it's, it's there. You've got the volute, but no finish wear on the neck this time. Just a whole bunch of finish checking. All right. I mean, I could see why somebody would prefer this version, but generally I think I like the first variation first simply because it still has his serial number on it. But yeah, if you're just looking for a cool aged silver burst custom, that's also collectible. I mean, these things haven't quite skyrocketed in value. Like sure, they were 10 grand new. And nowadays people are asking 15 to 18 K, but I've seen sales around 13 to 15,000. So they've definitely appreciated, but things didn't quite get as crazy as that initial run. Remember, this is me talking early 2022. If you're watching this video five, 10 years down the road, I'm sure the market might be significantly different. Let's see what kind of case candy we got here. 
We've got the mirror that you have to install yourself this time, kind of similar to the VOS run of the first time. You've got the black back plate if you don't want the medallion. Looks like we have a similar COA booklet, Adam Jones 1979. Same photo as last time, just a new different serial number there. And it looks like all the uh, regular custom shop stuff here and your standard pre-pack checklist. So let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench, look at each and every single one of them, see what really is different. I mean, we touched on a couple of them, but I mean, just right here, we can see there's a big difference even in the finish. So let's go check them out. All right, inside Adam Jones V2, let's compare and contrast. Starting with our pickups here, we have a reverse mounted custom bucker in here. And I mean, if it really did bug you, you could flip it this way, but then you'd also have to change around this, which is an easy enough fix to do, but that's how Adam does it. The backside of that just looks like this, patent applied for. Side by side with the aged inside, you can see it's the same. Here's what our neck pickup cavity looks like. Notice they even go as far as putting the finish checking in here, which you don't normally find on vintage examples. But now moving on to the bridge pickup. So this is a custom wound Seymour Duncan DDJ, as you can see by the markings right here. This appears to have some sort of a signature on it too. Let's compare this one side by side. However, where things are vastly different, this kind of takes after the VOS, so we've got Seymour Duncan on the outside. Whereas on the true age signed version 1, it's more so like Adams. It does not have any markings on it, and you're also going to notice it's aged. It's got some rust on the pole pieces. Whereas this one over here just looks like a brand new pickup. But as far as the pickup cavity, pretty much the same. You can compare them. But we do still have a two-piece maple top on top of a mahogany body. And that's a solid mahogany body. Weight relief didn't exist yet. Now here's one of those nitpicky details that you probably would have never noticed. These pickups are secured just like the VOS version. They have these black screws. They're a flat black top. But if you check out version one, they actually have aged these screws and some of them have been replaced just like on Adams. You can see this screw is actually a domed top instead of being flat. For some reason, both of his pickups are done up like that. So they used slightly different screws on here just to make it closer to Adam's mojo. Then obviously, again, we have the wear area right here. Whereas on this, it does not have that. Pretty much all they did was just finish check this guy up. So you'll also notice things like there's no ding right here on the bridge, as you can see right here. But speaking of the bridge, take a look at the age signed one. They filed that down because it's been worn down whereas that's what it normally looks like. However, on V2, they skip that step. As far as the markings, we can compare them side by side here. They're the same. As far as our tailpiece, we can do the exact same thing. Version two says advanced plating incorporated on it. So does V1. This is some more nitpicky aging stuff where you can see how that's all chattered and this one's all rusty. They didn't do that on the new version two. We do still get the metal switch tip right there, but we'll just kind of appreciate the finish checking job they did here. Now I've owned a ton of Norlin era Gibsons, and some of them have finished checking, some of them don't, but none of them quite feel like this. You can definitely feel that this is not like absolutely natural finish checking, but as far as the patterns go, it's actually pretty nice. I'm still not sure how Gibson's doing this, if they're actually putting them in freezers like some guys are saying, or if they're doing the razor blade technique yet. But every single one of these will slightly vary. So just view this as like a slight overview here. So that is version one. Now let's kind of compare it over here. So this has a lot more edge wear along the finish. Like there's actual chips right here. There's a lot more nicks and dings that they've got going on. Honestly, there's next to no finish checking on the top of Adams right here. Once again, right here, you can see the wear from his arm and picking and whatnot, and just tons of micro dings. So version one definitely more so closely shows you what his would be like. But at the same time, I've always thought these big dings on the top are kind of ugly. So <laughs> it just depends. Do you want an aged guitar or do you want an exact replica of his? But this lighting is really good to show you the color difference. This is like a more heavily yellowed version of a silver burst. You see how it's almost green? Whereas this, it's just kind of got a light greening to it. So that is a very different color scheme. So maybe you like this better, or maybe you like this better. That might help you decide. 
man, that is huge. Nobody's talking about that. This has a two-piece maple top because they covered it over. But to be correct, you need the three-piece maple top. You see these lines right here that they just scored into here? That's signifying a seam line on these. The other one for this one is right here. Now, unfortunately, they didn't actually make the seams slightly separate and get the lacquer to sink down. They just kind of took a razor blade to make this effect happen over here, which kind of makes it awkward because <laughs> a seam line should be perfectly straight. But these, if you put a straight edge on them, they're not. But that's because of the carved top. It's really hard for them to get something perfectly straight. But that is something I did not know about these. Two-piece top versus three-piece top. Does it really matter in the grand scheme of things because you can't see it? No, but if you want the best, you gotta get that one. How's this for getting nitpicky? So you see this knob here? Check out your thumb bleeder. It's rounded off. That's the modern style one. Whereas version one has the sharper iteration of that. It also looks like the knobs were slightly aged whereas they weren't on this other one. But to be honest, the aging's very slight versus being stark white over here. You also notice no pick guard holes. Whereas this one has the pick guard holes, so you could install a pick guard if you really wanted to. So, all right, some pretty noticeable differences right there. Let's move on from our mahogany bodies and maple tops to our maple necks that are adorned with ebony fretboards, 22 frets. Unfortunately, the spec sheet did not tell me what size. However, take a look at this one. Now take a look at this one. I think this actually has the larger extra jumbo frets on here for the version one. Whereas version two, it looks like they might have changed up that fret wire style as well as gave us back the fret nibs. Typically fret nibs are a good thing, but in this case, I guess they're evil. Now that could just be an optical illusion. So I wanted to kind of measure them. I get 0.1 for these and 0.11 over here. But both of them have the pearl block inlay, so that's nothing different. Bone nuts on each of these. 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length with 12 inch fretboard radiuses. And every neck's going to vary slightly, but we'll compare it here. So V2, we got 1.66 inches at the nut width. By the 12th V2, 2.04. First fret neck depth, 0 0.84, 0 0.99 by the 12th. So we got some slight differences there. Here's a closer look at that neck difference. So this is the first fret of V2, and this was V1. V2 almost has more of a D-shaped neck, whereas this one's like a very rounded C. Up by the 12th fret, there's not as much of a difference. So yeah, there is a little bit of a difference in the feel. That's strange. I'm not sure if I would have ever noticed that if I wouldn't have taken the contour gauge measurements. That definitely does have like a D shape to it there. Whereas this one's just like typical Les Paul C-shaped neck there. Interesting. Now let's move on to this headstock. So truss rod covers, I really want to talk about these, but that's what the truss rod looks like on this one. Sometimes truss rods just get set like that with a little bit of thread sticking out. I, I don't know why, they just do. Perhaps they needed a bigger washer under there, but the truss rod works just fine. But look at the version two truss rod cover here. Les Paul Custom. You got a good look at it, now let's switch over to V1. Look at that, it is so much more stylized. You see the font difference? This was really finely penned into here, whereas this one, it's a little bit sloppier and lazier in my opinion. It's got a bolder print. I definitely prefer version one's truss rod cover. It looks closer to a 70s, 80s original, but honestly, neither of these really look that close. And no, that's not a difference that you're seeing. They're both three ply. It's just this one didn't get quite as much of a beveled edge for some reason on V2. As far as our headstocks go, they are very similar here. Now, obviously, V1 came stock from the factory with the mirror on it, so that makes it look pretty different. And the fact that the lacquer has not aged as much on V1. It's a little bit of a lighter color, which explains this color difference. But that makes this one kind of cooler, in my opinion. Now we move on to the back sides. These are actually very similar. Now the version one has all these marks and gashes in the back. It's got a bunch of buckle dings. You can see here as we shine the light across it, honestly, it's kind of an ugly looking back, but you know, that's just how his looks because it's been gigged a lot. And you can see finished chip areas around the edges. So that kind of gives you an idea. But now we swap over to the new V2, just more even finish checking, but they went a little bit above and beyond back here. They did put a couple of extra dings in here. And we've also got an area here that got all kind of chewed up, kind of like what we saw on V1. But the rest is mainly just a whole bunch of finish checking here. So that's interesting. But now, obviously, the most important part is that the electronics are the same. 
So let's verify that. What makes his special are the orange drop capacitors, and there's one single 500k DiMarzio pot, whereas the rest of them are the standard typical Gibson ones. Is that what we had in V1? Yep. Just about the exact same thing. I don't see any major differences. Except for the color of wiring that goes from here to there, and there to there. So maybe there is a very slight difference in the toggle switch. Pretty much the only difference is the markings on the outside of the pickup. They're probably wound the exact same way, they just had a different faceplate on it, but who knows, maybe there is a bit of magic with that. I did want to check the PosiLock strap lock buttons. If anybody tried to sell these as vintage originals, the way you can tell vintage original versus reissue is the reissue ones don't have the grippers on the bottom. It was like a serrated diamond pattern on the bottom. These guys are just flat. And that's true on both of these Atom iterations. V1 got more of an aging job to the hardware though. Now we'll go up the backside of a three-piece maple neck. Now that would have been crazy had they not done the three-piece maple on this, but no, they left that spec alone. They probably just didn't want to bother doing a three-piece maple top when nobody's going to see it if it's not an exact replica, so I guess I don't blame them. But you've got all this finish checking. As far as finish wear on the neck goes, no. Whereas version one here, yeah, it's pretty much all worn off of this thing. You've got some stand rash on the side more dings on this side of the neck, just a whole bunch of aging going on. But what's kind of strange is these were the exact same price, brand new. They're different on the used market today due to collectability factors. But this was probably a lot easier for them to make because it required less time of somebody aging them. And now onto our headstocks. Seeing them side by side, I think I prefer version two. I like the way he did the white marker. It stands out a lot more than the black marker. However, instead of him numbering these out of 79 for version 2, they just put 2021, and then you get the number right here in your serial number. So that's an okay serial number, but in my opinion, it's way cooler to have his actual serial number on the guitar and having a limited edition number. And obviously we've got the wear and tear on the headstock, all that. Same Schaller tuners on both models though, so nothing different with that. But similar to the original VOS, we have a fancy design back here. It just looks like double H's to me. That's not something that existed on the first aged. Overall, a very similar guitar. I would say the biggest difference really is that two-piece maple top, the pickup having writing on it, and how yellowed the lacquer is. Every guitar within the run is going to weigh a little bit differently, so we don't really need to compare that. But this one, V2, measures 10 pounds, almost one ounce. So let's go ahead, plug V2 in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. I have the bridge pickup rolled down to about a seven because at 10, this is such a hot pickup. This is a very clean amp here and it's already overdriven. That's a deluxe reverb, so yeah, we're gonna roll that down to about a seven so we get something more like this. The neck pickup, we don't have any issues like that though. Though to balance it out, I think I'll roll it down to about eight and a half for this demo. gives you a basic idea of the clean tones. Let's go ahead and kick on some distortion. <laughs>
Now that we know all about Adam Jones version two, aged and signed, what are my final thoughts on this one? I would say it compares very favorably as compared to the original aged and signed. Honestly, there's a lot of small minute differences that I did not even know just by, you know, glancing over the spec sheets or just looking at them. So it was great that I had both of them too kind of discover some of those differences between here. Which one did I prefer? I I did like the aged and signed number one better because you know, it's just the original. This really doesn't have too much to do with Adam outside of just having his pickups in a aged silver burst guitar. So it's cool in that aspect. Do I think these will ever appreciate as much as the first ones? Eh, probably not. However, if you missed out on the first batch and you wanted an aged one, definitely go for this. This is just going to be the poor man's aged version, I think, in years to come. But, you know, the market's crazy sometimes. But there's VOS for people who don't like aging, there's this one for people who like aging but just don't like Adam's specific aging, and then there's the Big Mac Daddy most collectible of them all, his own replica. At the end of the day though, the tones out of these things are fantastic. If you wanna hear this one as compared to the VOS, which is essentially the exact same electronics in here, you can check out my initial review and demo. But this custom wound Seymour Duncan is where it is at. It is so aggressive. It does the Adam Jones stuff very well, if that's what you try to play, but I did so much of that in the last one, I wanted to kind of vary up my playing samples here. My only complaints with this one is it's got that whole static phenomenon where sometimes you can even hear it through your amp just going because it's got some built up static in the finish. That happens occasionally. Generally, it does go away. So I hope you enjoyed learning about these two guitars, whether you're interested in purchasing one of them or if you're just, you know, watching it for fun because that's what we do on this channel. Daily uploads of guitar related content. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.